You fool! And over those papers, or by midnight, your body shall be in the depths below. And if Aunt Agatha catches you with this, your body will lie in the street below. Come on, Anne. Let's get a move on. Oh, no, let me finish this chapter. Oh, very well. Twenty seconds. Be quiet a minute. Fifteen seconds. Oh, shut up, darling. Can't you see I'm reading? No, really. I thought you were riding a bicycle. Shh. Time. Oh, Brian. Hmm, fires of impulse. What's it about? Gas cookers? Give it to me. I will not have it covered with grubby finger marks. Must be a nice, clean subject. Kerry Merton's latest? Never heard of him. Well, in case you're interested, Kerry Merton can thrill any woman with a single sentence. No woman has a single sentence. Listen to this. Love is the beckoning hand. Follow it wherever it may lead. Don't fear it. You were born free and love is your birthright. Don't you agree with him? Give me that book. No. Come on. Why? Never mind why. I want it. You're going to keep it. Wrong. I'm going to burn it. Burn! Give me that book. Give me that book. I shall never forget you again. Oh. <laughs> now kill it. Now kill it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Now, who do you love, Kelly Merton or me? I've never met Kelly Merton. And it must be me. I'll bet he's fascinating. I'll bet he's potty. I'll bet he knows how to make love. Meaning I don't? Oh, you're not bad for an amateur. I suppose he's a professional. Of the highest rank. Mm, rank is right. You should read some of his books and learn some new ideas. I haven't learned all the old ones yet. Oh, strange. Didn't your granny teach you? I scarcely remember. Dear me, I thought you were quite old friends. I always think of you as grandma's boy. Just the same, you love me. Do I? You wouldn't promise to marry me if you didn't. Well, marriage is a little old-fashioned, isn't it? Is that what Kerry Merton thinks? He understands. What? Me. Every woman. Now you're talking absolute rot. You approve of convention, of course. A man can be free, but a woman must be chained. Well, Kerry Merton thinks differently. He isn't stuffy. She ought to be horsewhipped, and you ought to be spanked. Fine. I'm sorry, Anne, but somehow this old fossil infuriated me. If he were old, he couldn't write so beautifully. If he were young, he wouldn't write so disgustingly. We'll settle this, Brian. How? We'll call on him and find out. Can't do that. Oh, yes, we can. He's got a place up the river of Braden. We'll go there this afternoon. I wouldn't take you across the road to see that bounder. I'm afraid he'll be too fascinating, I suppose. Fascinating? Him? Ha! Huh. All right, I will take you to Braden. Good. But on one condition. It being? If this fellow proves to be what I think he is, you'll drop these silly ideas and listen to Grandma's boy. And if he proves to be what I think he is? You'll still listen to Grandma's boy. Go on, go get ready. Oh, I'm so sorry, Auntie dear. Gracious, Chad, how you do, Bones? Good afternoon, Brad. Good afternoon, Miss Brent. Why all this excitement? We're going hunting. Hunting? Mm-hmm. For the author of this. Powers of impulse? What is this burning subject? Some trash, I suppose? Worse, poison. Poison? Mm, mental poison. Oh, in that case, I shouldn't dream of looking at it. Careful it doesn't burn the sofa. Ready, Brian? Yes, right, Helen. Goodbye, Aunt Agatha. Uh, goodbye, dear. Bye-bye. Show me Kerry Merton. Is he here? Well, that's his house. Just there. Next to the club grounds. I wonder if he's anything like his books. I say that's Kerry Merton's wife. 
Oh, my dear. Fancy being married to him. Look, you can see him in there in his study. Any letters, Mary? They're in the study, madam. Thank you. She yearned for adoration. No. She was love hungry. No. Love was a food and she... No, no, no. Carrie, dear. What's the matter? It's my heroine, confound her. What's the matter with your heroine? Everything. What's she done? Nothing. That's the whole trouble. She won't move. Surely you can persuade her. She was to have been such a lovely thing. She just won't come to life. Of course she will, dear. Tell me, is she married? No, interesting. Oh? Well, that is, I mean, <laughs> she's very young. Can't your hero manage her? She hasn't met him yet. What's he like? Oh, my usual successful type, you know, strong and silent. Married, of course. Yes, to a good woman. Rather like a cow, you know the type. Do I, dear? And the wife doesn't bother me, she's just background. I see. Let's look for the girl. Can't you see her? Young, vivid, seeking after life. You mean modern? Yes, why? Modern girls always seeking after something. I know, dear, I know. That's why she's interesting. She's seeking after life like a... Like a... Like a kitten after its first mouse. Well, yes. But the world at her feet and love as her birthright. That's grand until she comes up against social convention. Ah, now you have said something. She finds herself up against this priggish social convention that tries to cramp her. And then what does she do? Can you tell me that? I'm not a modern girl. Then I'll tell you what she does. She smashes it. Oh, I'm sorry. There I go raving again. Why don't you shoot me? Why? You haven't opened your fan mail. No, oh, it's the usual thing. Pretending you don't like it? Mm. <laughs> Truthfully, I suppose I do. You're tired. Why not chuck work for a while? Let's run over to St. Moritz. Be lovely up there now. St. Moritz would bore me to distraction. What I need is new inspiration. I say, quite a pretty girl. Quite. Don't open any more of those now. We're going to lunch with Lady Brogdon, you know. We are, well. At the club. But, Margot, dear, you know what that means. I'll only run into a lot of foolish women. Yes, but think of the thrill you'll give them. Oh, they're easily thrilled. And I know they'll admire your new tie. Do you think so, really? Yes. I'm sorry if I was terse, old girl. That's all right, my dear. Come on. Divine. Oh, Ursula, darling, I've been looking for you. I want you to be on the committee of the fancy dress dance. Of course, Lady Bogdan. I shall be delighted. Uh, won't you join us at luncheon? Sorry, my dear, but I'm expecting the Curly Mertens. Oh, uh, is he coming? Now, careful, Ursula. You know, I can forgive it to the youngsters, but you're really too old for this nonsense. Really, dear. <laughs> there he is now. I wish I dared speak to him, but I'm going to dare. He's thinking of having his name written in his own book. Just this way for me. Oh, Mr. Martin, do write oh, yes, in my book. Oh, I do think that's nice. Well, well, this is quite against my rule, you know. Oh, oh please, Mr. Martin. Oh, 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 please, Mr. Martin. Hello, Lady Brogdon. Hi, Margot, dear. Nice of you to have come. And where's your famous husband? There. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, he doesn't want to. Oh, he's fine. Thank you so much. Oh, he's fine. I bless my soul around the man like flies. <laughs> you know, I find it decidedly amusing, don't you? Not very. Jealous? Of them? <laughs> no. Of his success, eh? Something of the sort. You see, Carrie's outgrowing me. I no longer inspire him. My dear, as bad as that. <laughs> I suppose it might be worse. Impossible. Who's the woman? Oh, there isn't any woman. Yet. Hmm, maybe there ought to be. What? Care has been grazing in the same pasture too long. That's the trouble. Why not take off the hobbles? The hobbles? Let him loose for a bit. Shut one eye. Pretend you're not looking. 
He'll run better in double harness ever after. It wouldn't work with Carey. My dear, it always works. <laughs> you don't know him. He's brave enough in a crowd, but alone with one woman. <laughs> he jumped the fence in a panic straight back to the home pasture. To find you there waiting to soothe him, eh? <laughs> My dear, how absurd. He'd shy away from any of the girls we know. <laughs> well, maybe, but... Someday, some little girl is going to come along with a lump of sugar. A lump of sugar? Why, in half the drawing rooms in London, there's some young girl devouring one of his wretched books. Eating stuff like that. Pairs of impulse, indeed. Who is this Carey Merton, I wonder? Carry Martin, 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 Carry Martin. This is where he lives. How do you know? There are photographs of this place in a magazine. <gasps> there he is. Oh, do come on and let's have a look at him. You can't run wild like this over a man's private property. No man has property which a woman can't share if she's clever. That's one of Carry Martin's own lines. Come on. I suppose you won't be happy until you've seen the wretched person. Now listen to this, Margot. Love was a food and she was starving. She knew that somewhere within that villa was the man, her man. Though she had never met him, she felt that through the ages they had been meant for each other. So she stood there waiting. What would destiny hold for her? Would love come gently like an autumn leaf, fluttering, falling, or like a ravening brute, teeth gnashing, eyes ablaze? Shock I'll take her. But don't trouble, you'll get all wet. But I am all wet. I so you are. Too bad. Are you comfortable? Quite, thanks. Another cushion? You're spoiling me. Not at all. A pity coat would have turned on your adventure. We oughtn't to have come. It was awful cheap. I've read all your books. Every one of them. That's very nice of you. And have you read them, Brown? Well, I'm not much of a reader. Oh, you needn't be shy about it. Nobody knows better than I do that my great appeal is to women. Yes, I know. I think your books are simply divine. Brian doesn't like them. Men seldom do like my books. I tell the truth about love and marriage. Brian should be very interested in love and marriage. Didn't you say you two were engaged? Yes, but I don't go in for modernism. No, of course you don't. 
Modernism is a woman's problem. Well, how would you like it if your wife got terribly uh, modern? Marriage shouldn't make any difference to the freedom of the individual. Oh, Mrs. Merton, don't you get a thrill being married to such a famous man? Oh, I'm afraid I've got rather used to it. Yes, I suppose marriage is like that. Like what? Oh, like that. I mean the edge, wearing off thing. Mm, a lot you know about it. Oh, please don't misunderstand me. My husband and I are perfectly happy. Aren't we, dear? Aren't we, dear? What? Oh, yes, of course, um, perfectly. Oh, uh, I didn't exactly mean that. But what I mean is, I feel a girl oughtn't to get married till she knows what she's doing. What? And a very sound point of view. Oh, is it? Yes, people fear experience too much. They don't realize it helps one to get a grip on life. What do you mean by experience? He doesn't mean marriage. No, I thought he didn't. I agree with him thoroughly. Come with my work. Why don't you two sit outside? It's much warmer there. Good idea. There's more air, too. As soon as your things are dry, I'll let you know. You're so kind. And you too, Mr. Merton. I shall never forget this afternoon. Never. Quite against my rules, you know. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> You needn't have been so rude. I'd like to strangle him. He's a perfect dear. He's a perfect ass. Just because he tells the truth about marriage. I was a fool to bring you down here. You were bad enough before. Goodness knows what you'll be like now you've actually met the poor sap. Oh, I'm much too upset to argue with you. Good. Then the sooner our things are dry and we go back to London, the better. I don't think I feel well enough to go back to London. Now look here, Anne. What's the idea? I think I'll stay in Braden for a while. Oh, no, you don't. You come back with me to London and like... Try and make me go back. Your chasing is Kerry Merton. <laughs> chasing? I hadn't noticed him running away. Now listen here, Anne. I'm just about sick of this. And so... Well, your things are nearly dry. Oh, thanks. Oh. Oh. Oh, my oh. dear. What's the matter? I don't know. I just feel weak. She's not weak. She's as fit as I am. Oh, but she's had a terrible shock. Oh, men never seem to understand. Oh, please may I use your telephone? Of course, my dear. Just inside. Thank you so much. What are you going to do? Telephone Aunt Agatha. Oh, hello, miss. Oh, there must be a reply. Try again. <laughs> oh, what is it, Margaret? Phone, Mum. Yes, well, I can hear that. Yes, well, it's been ringing for ages. Oh, I can't hear it. I've lost my glasses. down here and stay with me. No, certainly not. I never heard of such a thing. You must come home at once. But darling, I can't. I'm ill and weak. No, no. Ill and weak. You don't sound weak. Now, don't argue, darling. Pack a bag for yourself, dear, and bring me down some clothes. No, I insist on your coming back at once, mixing with a lot of strangers. Well, it may be impossible, people. Who are they, anyway? Merton? Kelly Merton? Not the Kelly Merton? Oh, 
no, I wouldn't dream of you coming home, dear. No, of course you're in. Yes, you wait there. I'll come down to you. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm going to be Carrie Merton. Come and help me pack. <laughs> you know, I, I'm frightening like a twit. I mean, uh, twitching like a bride. <laughs> Look here, Anne, give up this silly idea and come back with me. Certainly not. I don't understand you at all. Of course you don't. I love you, Anne. Why not marry me and forget all this modern nonsense? What? Tie myself down to one man with all my youth before me and the world full of men? You've got to stop reading this cat's rotten books. Well, you seem to think you can order me a pub. No, I don't, but I do feel I have some say in the matter. Really? Well, we're engaged, aren't we? Oh, I'm wearing your ring for what it amounts to. For what it amounts to? So you call that another silly convention? Of course. I see. Well, isn't it? No. Well, now, how do I know I'm going to love you forever and ever? But you told me you loved me. Well, I may meet someone I love more. Rot. Not at all. You and I have only met politely. I don't know what you're really like. Why? I've never even met you at breakfast. What difference does that make? Oh, more than you think. It would help me to decide whether you ought to be the first man in my life. What? Well... I feel you oughtn't to be the only one. You silly little fool. Hmm. You'd better take this back. No, Anne, please. Hello, Brian. Sure you're not going. Yes. I'm afraid I've outstayed my welcome. How absurd. You're always welcome. That's awfully nice of you. Thanks. Well, I must be off. Oh, but you're coming to the costume dance on Saturday, of course. I don't see how I can now. I'm sure you can. Promise you'll try. Very well. I'll try. Good. Brian seems in tremendous hurry to leave. Oh, he's a nitwit. Oh, I'm afraid you'll be squabbling. Well, yes, but it was impossible. He's got the most Victorian ideas. Besides that, he was very rude about Mr. Merton's books. Really? How dreadful. Well, I must say, I think you were a little unkind to him. Oh, let's not talk about Brian. The great thing is I'm here and absolutely free. I'll go and change now if I may. Do, my dear. Your things are quite dry. I do. Isn't it refreshing to have someone so young with us? She's like a breath of new life about the place. That child has something, Margot. A strange something. Yes. Perhaps a lump of sugar. Hmm? <clears throat> Hello, Anne. Are you coming with us? We're going to see Lady Brogdon. I won't, if you don't mind. I've got rather a headache. Oh, my dear, is it very bad? Well, Fanny... Oh, in that case, you must sit there and keep quiet. Have a nice rest. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie dear. <laughs> How your husband inspires one, my dear. Do you know, I feel as young as Anne. Attractive. Really? <laughs> of course, uh, when I was her age, I was quite a belle. But uh, marriage never appealed to me. Though the young men used to hang around like bees around a honeypot. <laughs> it was too absurd, really. You <laughs> when I think of those young men, how foolish they seemed. How beautifully, romantically foolish. They used to vow that if they couldn't get me, they'd lead a life of bachelorhood. <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. Merton, don't you think a bachelor's life is too pathetic? I guess it has its compensation. Yes, but a bachelor is so selfish, he keeps everything to himself. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Madam, my chopping, you don't mind. Oh, how revolting. Not at all. It's just a little underdone. I can assure you, madam, the whole thing was an accident. Surely that face is familiar to me. What face? Your face. It's the only one I've got. But I've seen it somewhere. I feel it. I know it. Yes, of course. It's Major Gore. You have the advantage uh, of me, Mr... Uh... Brent, uh, Miss Brent. Great Scott. Uh, Miss Brent. So it is. Uh, ages since I saw you. Ages. Oh, come, Major. It's not so very long ago. Since the war. Which war? Oh, <laughs> wicked as ever. Just a big tease. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, you know Mrs. Merton, of course. Mrs. Carey Merton. Oh, of course. Uh, how do you do? I'm very well, thank you, Major. Nice to see you again. 
I'm sorry about the chop. Well, I think if you don't mind, I'll just stay and chat with the Major. Certainly. I'll go and see if I can find Lady Brogdon. Did you sit down? Oh, uh, well, thanks. Don't mention it. And um, what have the earth been doing to you, Major? What have the what been doing to whom? I mean, what has fate brought you? A very tough chop. <laughs> we seem to have that in common. <laughs> Good job it wasn't Irish stew. Oh, dear. <laughs> Tell me, is there a Mrs. Major Gore? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, surely you're not a bachelor. Surely I am. Oh, remarkable. And how have you escaped the bonds of matrimony all these years? Oh, I think I was born under a lucky star. Uh, 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 you've travelled a great deal, no doubt. Oh, yes, keep moving a bit. <laughs> uh, still, uh, even the noodles get uh, caught sometimes. <laughs> and um, uh, do you live down here all alone? Yes. Oh, but Major, surely you haven't gone through all these years without meeting someone who has looked into your eyes and read all your secrets, who has taken count of every little unconsidered trifle, and who has surprised you by valuing you at your true worth. Haven't you met such a person? Yes, once. Tell me, who was it? The income tax collector. Oh. <laughs> you say she's young and attractive? Yes. And Kerry's is impressed? Obviously. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I could ask her to leave. I suppose most women would do that. <laughs> and most women would be wrong. Yes, that's it. I'm afraid of doing the wrong thing. I know, my dear. It's so easy for a wife to do the wrong thing when she's afraid of losing her husband. She's so vivid. I, I feel helpless. Oh, now, my dear, don't be frightened. <laughs> I'll tell you how to play your cards. This girl's staying on for the dance. Oh, yes. I don't know when she's leaving. Well, oh, you'll see what can be done. Meanwhile, I'd rather like to meet this modern vampire. Stroll up to the bungalow with me. Carrie's there, so she's sure not to be very far away. Oh, come along, then. Of course not. I'm delighted to have you. Well, if I'm putting you off your work, I can go back to the garden and weed. You'll do nothing of the kind. In any case, life needn't be all work, need it? You're awfully kind and understanding to me. You know perfectly well that this is one of those times when I hate being alone. It isn't good for anyone to be alone too much. It's human to want companionship. I've never had much companionship. No one understands me. You're lonely too, aren't you? I? Oh, I don't know. I feel you are. I know you are. You show it in your books. You're seeking something. I feel you're terribly alone in your soul. You know you're the most amazing child. You seem to know a lot about life. Only because I've read your books. Have my books given you this insight into life? Yes. Then for once I can believe in my own success. Oh, I love your books. They're all I've ever really loved. Except... Mm -hmm. their author. You silly little thing, you mustn't say things like that. Oh, but I must. I feel our lives have touched and that you always influenced me, Carrie. Carrie? Yes, Carrie. I've known you for years. I've always known you. We belong to each other. Uh, my dear child, you mustn't... Really. Come along. Oh, but my dear. Don't be foolish. It's just what we need. Oh, but I didn't bargain for that. Everything we thought. Excuse me, sir. The dancing master is ready for you, sir. Oh, good. Uh, tell him I'm coming along at once. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, are you taking dancing lessons? Oh, I'm pretty good already. I just have a little polishing up for the uh, costume affair that's taking place here. Just a few of the finer points. Oh, how delightful. I never dreamed you were a dancing man. Oh, it comes naturally to me. Always did. Well, could I come and watch? Certainly. Uh, I think I could do with a little polishing too. <laughs> uh, well, madam, I'll take you at 3 p.m. Thank you, Professor. I shall be charmed. Charmed. Uh, uh, well, Good afternoon, Major. Good afternoon. <laughs> Professor Hotspur from Tottenham. Miss Brent. Oh, how do you do? A charm, charm. Uh, Professor, uh, do you think you can squeeze me in? Madam, I am not a corsetteur. Oh, no, I meant, uh, uh, could you give me a dancing lesson? Why should be charmed after I finish with the Major? Would you care to sit down? Mm. Just for a moment. Now, Major, are you ready? Yes, I'm bursting to start. Right, well, now we start with the waltz. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's quite right now. It's quite simple. It goes one, two, three. A uh, one, two, three. No, keep your under chest in, please. Oh, I see. One, two, three. Now. A uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Up. Uh, one, two, three. Keep your feet flat on the floor and well planted. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, oh. Was my step at the right time? Yes, but in the wrong place. A technical error. Let me see if I can do it again. No, no. May I suggest you have your lady partner now? A lady partner, oh. please, please. It's all right now. Don't worry. <coughs> No, 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 it's the wrong position. Oh, it felt to me quite all right. Uh, now, that's better. Now, action. On the beat, one, two, three, now. One, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three, round. Round. Uh, is it round. Now, one, two, three, a little faster. One, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three. Three, two, one. One, two, three. Oh, oh, Major. <laughs> oh, Major. I assure you, madam, the whole thing was an accident. Confounded boy, what do you play at? It's this year thing here, sir. What thing here? That's my sabre. It's like a sword to me, sir. Well, it is a sword. Oh, I thought you said it was a sabre. Well, it is a sabre. Well, how can it be a sabre if it's a sword? I don't want any of your cheek. I know what it is. Do you think I'm a fool? Yes, sir. What? Uh, it's a sabre, sir. It is, but it's a sword. Well, you just said it was a sabre, sir. No, I don't want any more of you. Can you keep your tongue still for five minutes? Get me out of this. Yes, sir. And I'll give you a lever of ten for Oh, thank you, sir. Look out. Oh, oh. now, it's round here, sir. Mind my fingers. Oh, look. Put this in. What do you want to flick all in wrestling? Or... No, put that in there, sir. If you just take Don't you mention a sword of sight. Oh, sir. Oh, pardon me. I think I can help you. Just a minute. Take this out first, you see. Hold that for me. Right. Take this out. So? Oh, it's a bit tight, isn't it? That's right, hold the mm. coat. That's the trouble, sir. Your cutlass. Cutlass? Hey, well, you see, sir, it's a cutlass. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Cutlass. Oh. Cutlass. Yes, that's right. It's a sword. Why, so it is. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Silly affairs, these, don't you think? Oh, I don't know. I rather like fancy dress dancers. Oh, it's not a rude question. What do you mean you're supposed to be? Romeo. Oh, Romeo. I'm Napoleon. <laughs> Come along. Have a drink. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm expecting to meet someone here. Julian? Well, yes, Julian. Oh, you gay dog. Who is the lady? I may have seen her. Uh, Miss Brent. Miss Brent? Oh, oh, oh. God, you know Miss Brent. Very well indeed, you. I could write volumes about Miss Brent libraries. Have you seen her here this evening? No, and I don't want to. Don't you like her? I'm not very fond of women. They bore me to tears. You're rather hard on the fair sex. But I have to be. You see, my family was susceptible to two things. Mumps and marriage. I bet mumps, that's enough for me. <laughs> well, they are the first real woman hater I've met. There's not a woman breathing I'd walk two yards to see. My dear, may I assist you? Yes, I'm having trouble with my rapier. Uh, that's a saber. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought it was a sword. Oh. That's a pretty costume you nearly have on. <laughs> For a woman, Hattie, you're not so bad. Well, I'm not quite myself tonight. I'm Napoleon and living the part. Oh, get away. I'd like to see the woman you'd run away from. <laughs> There's your Juliet. That? That's her aunt. If she wants me, I'm away. <laughs> now, 
Miss Miss Holder, please. There you are, Major. <laughs> Didn't you see me? I didn't recognize you in that nightgown. Oh, tunic, Major, please. It's a Greek tunic. And Diana the Huntress. I think it's becoming. Becoming what? Oh, now you're teasing me. But I know what you are. Now don't tell me. Your Lord. However did you guess? And that great big murderous dagger you've got on. Oh, don't let it go up for anything. I almost wish it would. What? The orchestra. Oh, my feet are itching. Well, why don't you scratch them? Can't we dance? Yes, we can't. Come along with me now. We'll have a little drink. What will you take? Really, I hardly know. Maybe it's just my birthday. We'll have a large whiskey and soda. This will be. Two large whiskeys and soda split. Hello, Agatha. Oh, Brown, my dinner boy. Do you know Major Gore? Oh, yes, quite well. He's been looking for you all the evening. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> That's good for your bars. That will make your hair curl. Well, permanent way. Where then? Well, really, I know it could be here to chaperone me. But, uh, she and my girl are still drifting. I see. Oh, friend. Oh, part of your Hello, my dear. Would you like the part of my back for me? I've been terribly worried. There's something I must tell you, and yet I don't know how. It's about Carrie and me. Perhaps you'd better tell me. Even if it is difficult. Very well, I will. We're in love. I gathered something of the sort had occurred. Don't hate me too much, please. I couldn't bear a scene. I wondered if it would have been better not to have let you know. But that would have been so cheap. And I don't want there to be anything cheap about my first affair. I don't quite know what to say to you, Anne. I must admit it's rather an unusual situation. Well, I know, but isn't it better that you should know the truth? Yes, yes, of course. I admire your courage in telling me. It's honorable of you. Kerry, how does he feel about the whole thing? He loves me, too. Deeply, sincerely. I know it. What woman wouldn't? Does he know I was to be informed? No. I thought it better not to mention it to him. You know what he's like. So kind and chivalrous. He'd hate to think he was hurting you. Yes. Carrie would hate that. So please don't go to him and say I've told you. It upset him dreadfully. And really, it wouldn't do any good, would it? Not at all. If it had to be, well, it's as well to face it sensibly. Really, do you understand? My dear, I'm a woman of the world, in spite of being a trifle dull by matrimony. Now, obviously, the thing for me to do is to divorce Carrie, so that he should marry you. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, good heaven, no. I don't want to marry him. I don't think he's the marrying type at all. Oh, I see. You, you, you just want to borrow him? Yes, I suppose you could put it like that. But this is love, Margot. One can't confuse it with the bargain one calls marriage. We can't stop it coming and we cannot say when it will go. In the meantime, however, I shall have to make some arrangements for myself. I mean, uh, I should be terribly in your way if I stayed here. Would you stay here? Oh, my dear child, that's unthinkable. But if Kerry and I both asked you? Oh, that's what I hate about this. The fact that I may be breaking up your home. It was kind of you to think about that. I appreciate it. Then you will stay? I'll think it over. But why can't you? You've read Kerry's books and you believe in them. Well, you must think the same way as we do. Why, of course. Oh, but you can't be married to a man like Kerry and not understand. Wouldn't it be a little inconvenient for us all to share the same house? I mean, our relative positions might be confusing to the tradesfolk. There is that. I hadn't really looked at it in that light. Oh, it's a pity. Because you're such a good housekeeper and you know how to make us comfortable. There are drawbacks, dear. You'll have to face them. Scandal, for instance. Oh, but aren't we above that sort of thing? Perhaps. But do you think a man really likes to have his first wife with him on his second honeymoon? Oh, but Kerry is so broad-minded. I know. 
If only you and he could be somewhere else. Not here. But that would mean leaving you behind all alone. It would be awfully dull for you. It is difficult. Oh, my dear. Why not let me think it over? It's an important step for all of us. All right, we'll agree to whatever's best for you. And Margot, do you think it would help if you read Fires of Impulse again? Why? Well, you remember, in spite of what happened, the two women were always friends. Naturally. That's the only way. Margot, darling, thank heavens you're modern. Oh, my dear child. Two loves listen to your soul What are those spikes on your boots, Major, dear? Oh, uh, they're spurs. They don't do anything. Then why is it bothered with it? They're used to uh, help the horse. Oh, I see. Then if you have a short horse, you can lift your heels round those dear little wheels and, of course, help the horse. Naturally, yes. <laughs> and terribly late. Is she coming? Why don't you go and call for her? That's a good idea. I will. <laughs> so gently. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure he's not the shop? Margot! How do you like it? Well, where's the rest of it? Where's all there is? It's a new design. Who designed it? One of the latest young men. That's what he must have run short of ink. Shouldn't worry about it. Don't need to take your mind off your work. No doubt you're writing about the freedom of the individual. As a matter of fact, I am. Then in principle, you ought to approve of this costume. It represents freedom. You must admit, you're very individual. Well, it's not like you. How do you know? It may be me. No, I'm afraid the muse is working tonight. Come along, dear. We're terrible ladies, it is. Very well. You like my costume? I think it's perfectly charming. Sweet and pretty, yet simple. I envy your dance partner. Well, if you should change your mind, we could easily make up a costume for you. A couple of sheets and a face towel. <laughs> You'd be a marvellous sheep. No, I'm afraid you must excuse me. I feel that I shall do some of my best work tonight. Inspired? Definitely. Well, we'll leave you then. Come along, Anne. Hello, Anne. Oh, hello, Brian. I didn't expect you. Well, I sort of made up my mind at the last minute. I couldn't stay away. You might have let me know. I like your costume, Brian. Suits you. Yours suits you. <laughs> Why not? So, <laughs> Tommy. Who are you supposed to be? Why can't you guess? Well, come along, dear. Melville Gideon's going to give us a song. Come along. Want to hear him? Oh, yes. Excuse me, why I do a little pony? Very well. Quick one, old boy. Hello, Anne. Hello, Mel. I've heard about love and what it does to the heart. I've lived without love, never studied its art. But I'll confide in you. I'll know just what to do. When love comes my way, I shall make it stay It will discover in me An ardent lover in me I know I shall dwell Deep within its spell My heart's beating For that happy day
nice sentiment in that song. Hey, dear. Oh, it's pretty, but a bit old-fashioned. <laughs> oh, my dear, love is never old-fashioned. That depends on the lover. Oh, you're one of those modern girls. Perhaps you'd like it better this way. When love comes my way I will shout hooray I've been so childishly meek Now I will show my technique I know I'll upset Each blonde and brunette Not one girl will dare to tell me no when love comes my way. That's better. Oh, dear, baby, you ain't heard nothing yet. Listen to this one. When love comes my way, I will shout, hey, hey. I'm just the fella for you. I beat my girls black and blue I'll go out each night I'll get myself tight Nice young ladies Better keep away When love comes my way Tell me what to do, Lady Brogdon. I'm quite beyond thinking for myself. Where's Katie now? At home, working. He's like a factory in full blast, turning out more munitions for his war on convention. Send her to him. Alone? You've got to take a chance. Now do as I tell you. The... Brian, you're down to marvelous. I'm glad there's something about me you like. Is there anything you like about me? Yes. Two things. Oh, what? My arm. Oh, Brian, behave yourself. You're done. You know, Anne, there'll never be anyone else. Oh, don't be silly. You'll meet heaps of other girls. Perhaps. I shall wait for you forever. That's what you think now. In a year's time, I shall be sending you a wedding present. Just because you're that kind of an idiot. It'll be our wedding. No, it won't. I can't believe you mean it. Yes, I do. Something much greater has come into my life, Brian. You know what I mean. It's only in that way. No, I think you can break some glass. Oh, let's go outside. This place is tight to me. I must talk to you, Anne. You don't know what this is doing to me. All right. Poor old darling. Does it hurt terribly? You know the answer to that, too. Oh, Brian, be a dear, and get me a glass of water. Thank you. I've been thinking over about what you said. About you and Carrie. I think you're quite right. Oh, Margot, do you really? Yes, you can give him so much inspiration. Such a fresh outlook. Oh, it's wonderful of you to look at it like that. You should go to him. He's all alone. He needs you. I know. You won't be disturbed. I told Carrie I would be late. You're a darling, Margot. Here, here, and finish this dance with me. I adore this tune. Yes, do, Brian. Pleasure. There's one thing about Brian. He dances his mind. More than you can say for Carrie. He's impossible. What the... Crazy. What are you... What are you looking at you doing? I haven't got eyes at the back of my head. You hit me in the back of the head. 
You hit me on the... Why don't you look out for your rotten sword? This isn't a sword, it's a saber. I don't care whether it's a nail file. Keep it to yourself. Well, you look out for yourself. No, I want none of your cheek, understand? You, why, you keep yourself away from me. You? You don't know how to wear the rotten thing. That's your trouble. You never carried a sword in your life. I doubt if you've even been a boy scout. What are you, anyway? I am the Duke of Wellington. Who are you? I am Napoleon. Oh, Napoleon, eh? I, I think we've met before. Really? Well. Waterloo. Are you sure it wasn't Charing Cross? I beg your pardon. Granted. I, I beg you. <laughs> Gentlemen, control your scimitars. Oh, 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 dear. Oh. <laughs> Thanks very much, Brad. That was sporting of you. But you done beautifully. No fat enough. Remember, I'm an old married woman. Not old. And not so very married at the moment, eh, Brian? What a mess it is, isn't it? As you say, what a mess. Where then? Oh, she's gone along to the bungalow. The bungalow? Stay there and think of you here alone. I had to come to you. It all seemed part of us. The music, the colours and the lights. It went to my brain. I grew restless and impatient. You know what rhythm does to one. It sort of intoxicates. If you had been there, it would have been so different. So wonderful. And now the night is all about us. And we're alone, together. Anne, Anne, behave yourself. But what can we do? Do you find her so very unattractive? I don't know. Well, and you, you know, you are not so bad yourself. Now, why don't you two get together and do a bit of flirting? Lady Brown, oh, mean it. One or even both of them may come back. Well, let them catch you. Or even better, send Carrie a note. A note? Tell him to go right ahead with Anne. Acting on his own theories, you found a new and violent passion of your own. It's a grand idea. Let's do it. I'm game if you are. Well, quick into the writing room. You've no time to waste. <laughs> ah, there you are, dear. Oh. They're just starting the contest. Oh, good. I think they want us to just surprise you somewhere. Two large whiskies and sodas split. Twins? There's only one. I beg your pardon. What are you tracking at? I've got. You've got hiccups. That's what I've said. I say, bartender, this lady's got hiccups. What shall I do? Hold her breath and count nine. How can I hold her breath, you stupid ass? Don't do it. I can't help it. Don't help it. Stop it. I can't do this either. Well, stand on your head for half an hour. Oh, shit. Hiccups, sir? No, thank you. <laughs> You're doing your brother an idiot. Uh, it's always a good cure for hiccups, sir. <laughs> oh, that's jolly good. Very clever. Here you are, it's half a half a crack. Go buy yourself a yacht. I see, a sudden shock and the hiccups are cured. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> hiccups. Yes. Yes, I know, I've had it myself. But no more, not me. Really? No, I've found the perfect cure. No. Yes. And what's more, I'll cure you of your hiccups, fair lady. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, don't mention it. I cure all my friends and they cure their friends. By the time I finish, there won't be a hiccup left. How uh. wonderful. What do I do? Oh, no, no, no. Trust in me. Now, get somebody to give me a glass, an empty glass. Uh, thank you very much. Now, now, I put this glass on the floor. Now you bend down and look at that glass for ten minutes and your hiccups will be cured. It's wonderful how quickly the cure works and it is permanent. So this lady will never have hiccups again. <laughs> hiccups. <laughs> I can tell you a perfect cure for that, Miss Brent. Oh, do tell me. 
Pick out the man you really love. The man I really love? Tell him to put his arms around your neck. Hold your breath while he gives you a long, long kiss. Madam? Yes, will you take this note up to Mr. Merton at the bungalow at once, please? Yes, madam. Give me that note, I'll take it. Oh, Major, why should you? At this moment, I want to make myself scarce. I'd walk to China on foot. Oh, Margaret. Have you seen the Major? Yes, he's gone to China. China? Oh, don't tease O'Brien. He's gone to the bungalow. Oh, thank you, the bungalow. Are you afraid of him? O'Brien, I hope this works. It'll be wonderful for both of us. I'm sure it will. Oh, pa pa pardon me. Uh, have you seen the lady that fell off the end of this? Fell off the end of it? Yes, right in the middle. Oiled. Oiled? Huh. Up six points. Ha <laughs> ha. Hooray, I'm rich. Ha ha ha. Hooray, Carrie, please stop writing for a moment. My dear child, don't you see I'm working? I know. But can't we forget that for a while? Just think of each other. Can't we forget there's such a thing as work? Love never calls by appointment, you know. I say, that's a line. Uh, and, and it fits. Excuse me a moment. Oh, why do I keep on breaking the points of my pencil? Ow. Carrie, I've come here to you so that we could have this time together without interruption. Don't you understand, dear? We must discuss the future. Future? We're going to travel the same road together, hand in hand, two free souls, pausing for a while to meet and kiss. I say, that's splendid. Why, we'll have you writing stories soon. <laughs> to meet and kiss. Is there anything in your life but writing? What do you mean? I have my house, my wife. Your wife? Oh, but what about me? I don't understand. Oh, but you must. I've thrown over everything for you. I've burned my boots. I can't go back now. You took me in your arms. Harry, you know I love you. I, I, I'd do anything for you. I've torn my life out by the roots just to give to you. My poor child, you don't know what you're saying. But it's all been so plain. You were inspired the moment we met. Your life here was unbearably dull. You showed that in your every movement you were longing for life, for love. Everything that life was denying you. I felt your love come to me from the very first. Harry. You must love me. You must. I should die of shame. But you're just a child. You don't know what you're saying. Uh, supposing my wife was to hear. Oh, don't worry about Margot. She understands. You mean you've told her? Everything. But there's nothing to tell. Oh, yes, there is. We love each other. And she knows it. Oh, my poor Margot. But Terry, darling, she's glad. But you must be mad to suggest such a thing. Why, why Margot's the last woman in the world to count in such an abominable, remote way. Carrie, your book's on marriage, your theories. Don't tell me it's all a lie. Anne, Anne, you're so impressionable, so literal, you take too much for granted. You're frightened. Even you're afraid of convention. But it shan't beat us. I won't be parted from you. I will get you. Why, I couldn't bear to see the laughter in Margot's eyes. Hey, hey, hey! What's this? Dearest Carrie, I know you will be the first to congratulate me. Brian and I have reached a perfect understanding and a... Margot! Here, yeah, you look after this child. Oh! You nasty old man! I assure you, madam, the whole thing was an accident. Here he comes. My job, it worked. Don't forget your part. Why, Smurf. Hi, old man. Hi, old man. I'm in a hurry. Yes, so am I. Let's go someplace and have one. You'll have to excuse me. I must be going. Oh, well, I can't with you. No, it's impossible. Oh, nothing's impossible. Have a safe time. <laughs> I'll see you another time. Uh, no time like this. Now, I want to tell you something, then. Uh, uh, it's a secret. Uh, don't tell us so. I'm a bit tired. Yes, I've noticed it. 
Mr. Nanoran, sir, I want to tell you something I've been bursting to say for years. Well, what is it? You're a novelist. And as a novelist, you're absolutely awful. Well, indeed. Yes, you are the most appalling type. But between you and me, old man, your books are utter bought. No other word for it. I'm beginning to think you're right. Have you seen Margot? Yes, I, uh, I did see her a little while ago, and, uh, and with a very attractive young man. Stop! Uh, Mr. Burton, allow me to present you with a cup for the most original costume. Oh, uh, thank you, but I, I'm looking for my wife. Hey, hey, hey. I want my wife. Excuse me, Miss, I can't say her attention now. <laughs> Darling. Brian. What the blade is this, the meaning of this? Oh, Carrie. What the devil do you mean? Don't you know this is my wife? Quite. But if I remember rightly, the phrase goes, marriage should not make any difference to the freedom of the individual. Margot, you'd better come home at once. Oh, but this is all against your theory. I don't care a hang about theories, and I'm blessed if I stand by and see you mauled about by a little whippersnapper like that. Actually kissing him. Mrs. Merton, you played a detestable trick. Why? You invited me to stay here and arranged everything so that you could catch Brian. But, uh, but what's Brian got to do with you? He was going to marry me. I was, but I'm not now. Here I say. What, tie myself down to one woman with all my youth before me? Oh. And the world full of women? It's all your fault. You don't know anything about life or you wouldn't write those silly novels. What? Yes, silly, stupid trash. Now you know. Look here, I... Oh, darling, come on. I yes. think we'll go home. Well, did you hear what she said about my novels? Yes, but then... That wasn't a very nice thing to say to your hero. How dare you kiss her like that? You know, Anne, he's a very important person, and you oughtn't to have been rude to him. And right on top of your telling me I was the only girl in the world for you. Just imagine what would happen if all those women in there knew that you'd insulted Kerry Murphy. Heaven knows how far you'd have gone if her husband hadn't have caught you. I'll never write another of those dribbling novels as long as I live. Oh, yes, you will, darling. They make the ladies happy, and they buy me pretty frocks. Well, if they're all as pretty as that one, I'll write a thousand novels. There's one thing, though. My next heroine will be a wife. Come on, darling. You with my niece in your arms? I'm ashamed of you. Well, he cured your hiccups. That... Oh, fiddlesticks. The Kerry Merton, the man who understands women, the man who tells the truth about love and marriage. You'll be a nice person for a girl to marry. The author of Fires of Impulse, the smasher of convention. Why, your wife couldn't trust you out of her sight. Love is the beckoning hand. Follow it wherever it may lead you, and you'll probably meet the first man in your life at breakfast. Brian, stop, please. I know I've been a fool, but you needn't rub it in. But I'm only agreeing with you. Well, don't. I'd rather you beat me. Uh, very well, I will. Oh, no, 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 Brian, don't, don't. Marry me first. 